Hello, hello. Hey, Candace. Hi. Can you see me and hear me? <laughs> I can see you and hear you. How about okay. everybody else? Can everybody see and hear us? Ooh. <laughs> adjust my camera here a little bit. So I can see both of us. So how oh, are you? Great. Uh, oh, thank you. I a good filter today. Oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> for it. It's very warm. It is. Oh, my gosh. It was like we had everything from rain to snow to sunshine today. I know. And you know what? Spring is almost here. <laughs> I, can, yeah. I can feel it. Yes. I I. I am so ready for spring. I Today I was talking about what we're going to put in our garden this year. So tell me. Tell I know me you're what. a big gardener. Yeah. I We had these multicolored carrots in our salad tonight. And oh. I decided I am going to plant some of those mm. multicolored carrots. And I want beets because I love the beet greens. And you can never get the beet greens with the beets at the grocery store. And if you yeah. do, they're wilted and... So yes, oh, I love tons of herbs. You love herbs. I mean, I, I do too. Herbs. You can just do so much with them. Yes, and I'm trying to be a lot better about um, minimizing my food waste. So okay. I kind of challenged myself this week to use up all of the wilted herbs and spinach <laughs> and greens that were languishing in my fridge. So I ended up making a an interesting little like cilantro pesto. Oh, was it good? It was really good, and I put it in a quesadilla. <laughs> I think I think it's going to become a a new recipe post. Oh, you should tell me when that's up. I'll try it. <laughs> I always have greens in my fridge that are doing something that I'm not doing anything with. So, mm -hmm. so many that's ideas. Good. So we should introduce ourselves to uh, people. people are joining. Hello, Brenna. Hi. Uh, someone already wow. said they love oatmeal ice cream, so they know who you are. So I am great. With the founder of um, Fomagerie Zengari, and we're coming to you uh, live tonight on the eve of International Women's Day. So we thought it would be fun to get together for a candid conversation with Candace from Oat and Mill Ice Cream. Yay! I'm so excited to be here. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, I own Oat and Mill. I founded the company uh, 2015, and Oat and Mill is dairy free vegan ice cream, which is the perfect complement to cheese, in my opinion. <laughs> everything right yeah oh yeah yeah I actually had your cheese but I ate it all I was gonna <laughs> bring it on camera and then I was like uh no this isn't gonna last <laughs> well I have some of my favorite peanut butter and chocolate in the freezer that I'll dig into when we're finished it's my little treat mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to remember when we how we met it was it was so long ago that yeah. It's funny because like when you're in the business community, you kind of feel like you know someone, but you're not necessarily friends, but you're like, oh yes, we know each other. Like we see each other. And I think it was like that for a while. And um, until we actually sat down and had a chat and hung out a bit. And then you couldn't stop us, right? I know. We're unstoppable. <laughs> So we thought it would be fun to come to you and talk to you about women entrepreneurs in the vegan food space, because that's what we are, and that's what we're all about. And I think there's a lot to be said about entrepreneurship, about women in business, about work-life balance. Uh, so we're here to answer your questions and to maybe give you a bit of an idea, a peek into the life of a vegan woman entrepreneur. So it's not a secret, it's <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we will show you what it's like. 
The one thing I remember, and I want you guys to feel free to put your questions in the chat because we want to answer your questions. We want to know what you're curious about. Um, and we took some questions before the live tonight. So we have some things to, to chat about and, and um, touch base on. But one of the things, and I think I mentioned this to you before, was early in my entrepreneurship career, I had a little um, meeting with Auntie M, uh, Auntie Lou from Auntie Lou's Bakery. And the first thing, you know, when I asked her for advice on being an entrepreneur, she said, well, make sure you have a really good therapist. And I was like, that's a really weird thing to, to say. So, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Then years and years later, it, I think back on that and, and her, what her experience must have been like as a, like a mm -hmm. trailblazer in the women, vegan women's movement. Yeah. And, and I can see. I can say that I understand where she's coming from. That I think that mm -hmm. you are comparing the life of an entrepreneur to the life of someone who's not an entrepreneur. There's there's a lot of differences and uh, yeah. a lot more highs and lows and um, a lot of self doubt. I'd say so. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think yeah. about that? I on I think that's great advice. Honestly, I. I think and when I think about that time, that was also, like you said, very early on for vegan food in general. And I know starting a vegan business in 2015, how challenging that was, but also um, being a woman and doing that. And um, yeah, I mean, I can remember so many people when I used to be at the farmer's market would just come up to me and say, oh, do you, is this a family business or do you own this with your partner? <laughs> and I'd be like, no, 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 it's just me. <laughs> it's just me. This is fully woman run. And I think um, when you like look at all those pressures of how you need to stand up to represent other women at especially such like a, it was such a pivotal time that I think therapy was probably a good idea. And honestly, um, I mean, therapy looks different for everyone, but having a therapist and someone to kind of, like you said, go through that roller coaster with and uh, be able to learn to adapt. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we did together as uh, a group. There were, we had um, a group of entrepreneurs that used to meet on a regular basis. Monthly, yeah. And that was one of the best experiences just to be able to speak with other entrepreneurs that had similar um, problems or issues that uh, were going through things. So just, I think it can be a very uh, lonely journey as an entrepreneur when you're on your own and you don't have that circle of support. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that I totally agree. A lot of the media portrays entrepreneurs as these individuals that like a solopreneur, like they go their own way, they make their own um, path in life. And mm -hmm. It sounds lonely. Like it does sound like a lonely thing because you're doing what not everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. So um, having a community is so important. And for us, we were so fortunate to have a group of people. And I, I can remember going to those meetings once a month and just honestly, like feeling like after, like I wasn't operating within an echo chamber anymore mm. I was making decisions and I had people around me that were you know pushing me when I needed to be pushed and and supporting me when I needed that as well yeah I 100% agree and uh, I value we we try to hop on calls once a month or 
whenever we have questions to support each other. And I know that you have a lot of other um, entrepreneur friends in your circle as well. So that's so great. It, honestly, it's, it's like one of the few things that's really helped in business over the past couple of years too, because we've kind of missed that informal, like I think we were talking about this the other day, there's no informal discussion and you don't run into a friend at a trade show anymore and mm. say, oh my gosh, did you hear this happen to me? <laughs> I need help with this. You need to help me. Well, there isn't that. So you kind of have to be courageous and reach out. And um, it's always so, so rewarding whenever we chat because like you have a circle as well. And so you bring all of that influence into our conversations. Yeah. Super powerful. That's, you know, the last two years without trade shows, without that connection with other entrepreneurs and other people has been a whole different ball game. So really looking mm -hmm. forward to next uh, month where we're going to meet us up at uh, CHFA West out in Vancouver. Yay. So we'll be back on the trade show tour again <laughs> just taking a, a little little ride on the trade show train <laughs> i'm just now, gonna start a little bit but you know sure take our time using it into it yeah yeah and it's been a bit of a blessing i have to say I'm, i've been much more present at home and with my family because that's one of the things that i personally have found to be challenges balancing work life as a mom on the road a lot and working a lot as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur there's always something you can be doing and there's always more work you can be doing <laughs> and as a mom you have this guilt that you're not spending enough time or attention with on your children my children are pretty grown and they're but my son was 11 when I when I started on this journey. So wow, he he probably remembers me blending cheese until you know midnight and in the kitchen packing <laughs> things until all hours mm. and you know being absent right. at trade shows and stress and so it's funny that he decided to study business now. <laughs> it's like. How? <laughs> yeah, you think he would have, you so know, great. learned his lesson, but I guess it it inspired him instead, and he's taking the same program I think that you took, Candice, at Ottawa U. Oh yes, great program. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's so exciting, and you know what? I mean, for your son to basically those pivotal years, eleven to adulthood, to grow up and around you and see his mom doing all that you did like that's very I'm not surprised he's in he's going to business school because that is that would have just left such a positive imprint on you as a kid right well I hope so because he complained about it a lot when he was little <laughs> <laughs> well yeah so we'll see and you know how a business kind of becomes a family business everybody gets sucked into that that yeah big vortex where Black hole. you know emergency packaging or you know sharing mm -hmm. the booth at a trade show my daughter did expo manger santé with us uh, a couple of years when we first started out and uh Wow. And she's actually working in the business. So it's great to have that ability to involve the rest of the family, but they also mm. don't really have much of a choice. How, how does your family feel about what you're doing? <laughs> that, well, it's the same thing for many years. I've just kind of dragged everyone along with me. And um, the best people, they just they they're okay with it and uh they go with it and i think that there does come a point where you're you kind of realize all right i need to hire someone or i need to um look at you know figuring out a better way to do this where i can still maintain 
a personal relationship and not just have, you know, dragging everyone around. <laughs> and um, yeah, that takes some time to learn as a business owner and feel confident in hiring. And um, I think that that really changes you when, when you have a business and you make those first few hires and you stop calling on uh, family or friends to help you out when you're in a pinch. And, um, but yeah, I mean, we're so lucky, right? We're so, mm -hmm. I'm so grateful because I'm sure there's many people that just don't always have that support network. And that can be, I could imagine very hard. Mm -hmm. For sure. How do you manage to uh, balance your work life ratio? Do you have rules that you kind of follow or boundaries that you try to adhere to? Uh, I do set some boundaries. I've gotten much better at setting boundaries over the years. Um, a few years ago, I hit burnout and it was really bad. I don't recommend it. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, but you know, it's like, I don't know. I, I have a, I just have a constant conversation with myself. Like how, how's this going? Is this working? Can I improve this? I try not to bring too much emotion into it and just more like, does this actually function well? Does this make sense? How, what is my day to day like? And um, ultimately, you know, if I want to work till 10 p.m. one night because I'm really enjoying what I'm doing, I'm going to do it. And then other nights I'm going to say, nope, it's five and I want to I want to play Nintendo. So <laughs> I'll see the world tomorrow. Um, and it's just kind of, you know, over the years, like, uh, we, I used to answer emails all weekend and, uh, I stopped doing that and it's, it's more just like finding whatever works for you. I think, because there are times, like I said, where I want to work late and I do that and I, and I'm okay with that. And, um, and, and kind of knowing your limits too, I guess is really, really key. Like, what do you think? I think there's like a, there has to be a happy medium between working seven days a week, 10 hours a day and, and having a life that you enjoy. And I think that's what is key is like, if you're enjoying what you're doing, then that says you're doing something right. If, if you're having a burnout, like you did a few years ago, and I think I remember that, um, <laughs> probably that's not so great, you know, no. uh, and you have to be able to define what success means for you. And I think that's a big thing is your business doesn't have to take over the world to be successful. Your business yeah. can be as small or as large as you want and be successful. Oh, absolutely. And this is a funny thing that I think, I don't know where this mindset comes of like, just kind of taking over the world with your business. Um, it's very like, it's probably a societal thing, but, um, but you know, some of the most popular and greatest businesses I know are local and they just, they run like they would a national company. And so I always tell young entrepreneurs that, you know, keep, keep open to that idea of success and what that looks like for you. Because sometimes you, you have an expectation of yourself and you think this is what it should be based on how your upbringing or how society says it should be. But really, that's not what you want. And so you kind of have to learn and figure out what is it that I want and then there are other times where I find I've seen just like other entrepreneurs change they something happens in their life and success looks different now for them mm. and it, and it's having that like openness to change your perspective on what success means and what it is for you and so I think that keeps healthy relationship with yourself and business 
And I know that there is a company that I won't mention their names, but, um, you know, they started off and they wanted to go national and, and they worked so hard towards that and they had some challenges and setbacks and they decided, you know, we're going to pull back and we're just going to focus on our business in this particular area and we're just going to do this really well. And that changed everything for them and now you know they're at a different place and and years later they have the momentum that they can do what they wanted to do initially but it took them pulling back a little bit and reevaluating and you know being open almost, to a different yeah. vision it's like you almost have to build your foundation before you start building on top of that and so um, true. yeah wow good for them but sometimes you don't really know when you're starting off you mm -hmm. don't know like you went to business school so maybe you didn't make all the same mistakes that I did but uh well you know, I, I had a steep learning curve over here <laughs> well you've done great either way <laughs> but <laughs> the funny thing about business school is that it's really great at showing you what the big picture looks like. They train you as though you are to run Pepsi, for example, like you were to be the CEO of a fortune 500. So you do get this sort of like really big, um, like mindset and, and you learn, you know, how to operate at that level. And so, it's really helpful, but there's also just this practicality that can't be taught. You have to experience, you have to try and try again and fail a bunch of times when starting and running a business that mm. is just like, it's, I don't know, for me, it's experience is the only way that you can really get to uh, get through that and, mm. and learn and grow a business. For sure. And why, one thing I notice a lot is that there are a lot of women in the vegan food space. A lot mm -hmm. of women business owners. I can think of so many um, plant-based companies that were founded by women. Why do you think that is? Honestly, I have no idea, but I love it. <laughs> I totally agree with you. I see way more women in business, in food business than I do men on average. Um, and I just think like, it's awesome because it's just such a great community. And I think when we have more and more women in this category, we're getting, you know, better and better results. And we're seeing, mm -hmm. um, we're really seeing building each other up. And so I, I, I'm not really sure. Like, what, what do you think? I, I don't know why that is, but. Well, I think that in general, women are more open to plant-based eating than say your traditional fella would be. But um, I also think that, you know, women are generally the cooks in the household more often than not. So it's, it yeah. kind of makes sense to me. And, you know, there's a lot of bold, smart, brave women that are out there cooking and mm -hmm. Absolutely. growing and learning and speaking their minds. It's, it's great. There's the, the Vegan Women's Summit this year coming up. Ah, are you going to that? I am not. Um, but... <laughs> Sounds great. You know, though. I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, I'm just happy to be back in um, uh, getting to trade show mode, but mm. I've actually enjoyed being home a little more. So I'm I, it's, really it's, it's bittersweet for me because you know I have three grandkids that I like to spend time with and my children, my son off at university right now. So I don't get to see him as much as I would like, right. but you know, to be gone as often as I was before where I was doing shows across the country at least twice a month. <laughs> it it's was amazing. Like, 
it's funny because yeah i totally agree it's uh trade shows are such a they're pivotal to your business but they also are just a really small portion of the business mm -hmm. and they take so much energy they take so much time mm -hmm. so um i totally get that pull of like stay home and i yeah i'm like i, I think i'm gonna be more selective with um with trade shows and what we attend in the future, which I'm sure, I'm sure there's some people that just be so upset. <laughs> you know, you just want to, you want to be there. You want to do it all and people want to see you. And it's such a great time to connect with people and customers again, but um, you can only do so much really. Mm. You have to kind of like choose like, what do I want to be really great at? And where do I want to put all my energy and uh, traveling takes a lot out of you. Mm -hmm. like, after a trade show, there's usually like two days where I need to just not do. <laughs> I just need to like veg out and uh, garden or, you know, cook food or something. <laughs> like eat a healthy meal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I do. And, you know, the kitchen is where I recharge too. And that's where... You know, we nurture our friends and our family, and it's it's just a very warm and welcoming place to be. So that's why we uh, call the Zen Gary Kitchen the heart of our home, because I really believe I the kitchen is the heart of the home. I love that, the heart of the home. I really, I don't know about you, but because of being inside and at home so much, I have just cooked up a storm every day mm -hmm. I make a meal it's it's amazing I'm actually making some pretty good food I bet you are <laughs> <sighs> and yeah. I'd love to see more of that so you should share mm -hmm. all of your creations not just your ice cream no oh, well I don't know if they're ready for that level <laughs> <laughs> I'm Maybe. sure they are I'm sure they are so we are almost at the half hour mark and Candace there was I an interview that I did recently and the interviewer asked what three pieces of advice would you have for an entrepreneur just starting out so okay. what would be your three pieces of advice for a new entrepreneur hmm. I think the first thing is to build your community or to find your community. And I think community is such a, you know, it's such an interesting concept, but it's as old as time. And to have a network of people around you is so important. It helps you when you're starting your business to, you know, even just throwing ideas out there and getting feedback from those around you and having other people that are going to see things that you're not seeing and then having support because it's so, so challenging to start a business and go your own way. So I think, I think my first thing would say, I would say definitely build a community or, or find one. There's a lot of communities already out there and I can remember even just the farmer's market being a excellent community mm. when I started my business and, uh, and just having that, those group of like-minded people to be there for you can uh, really make a difference in your success. Um, two other things that I would say, uh, try to figure out yourself. <laughs> it sounds easy. It's not, but try to, try to get to know what does your day-to-day -day like look like? What is your, um, what do you like to do? What do you don't like to do? And what do you get at? Because often what you like is what you're naturally good at. And that's where you should focus your attention. And it's also going to help you establish a clear vision of what you want for your business and your life and the more you know yourself the um the clearer that vision is going to be and you're going to just almost like naturally trip and fall into place and that's that's the wonderful thing when you really 
have a clear like idea around okay every day I like to be around people or I like to um I like to travel or I I don't like sales <laughs> you know it's just like understanding what is what is my life look like now and how do I want it to look um mm -hmm. so get to know yourself and, and that helps um, you also figure out where you should focus your energy on hiring people. Yes. Yes. That, I think that would be my third is stop hiring people that are exactly like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, that was when I hired my first person that was completely different from me. And it was just like all of these problems we were having disappeared. <laughs> And it was, it wasn't, it's not your fault. It's just that you have skills where you're really, really great. And then other areas where you, you know, someone else is going to be better at that. Mm -hmm. And when they come in and they fill that gap, it's incredible um, how much smoother things can run. And um, yeah, and I think it's really, really easy and fun to hire people that are just like you because you understand them and you just click, but ultimately we need people that are different from us to um, expand our knowledge and push us to just become better, uh, better companies and um, better for our community and everyone. I agree with that a hundred percent. And in my uh, three pieces of advice overlap yours in so many ways. Tell me, tell me. The first one was uh, love what you do because you have to love what you're doing to get through all of those rough patches. If you don't love what you're doing, then I think your chance of success is, is a lot lower than it would otherwise be. And two, learn to bounce back. Resiliency is so important because you know, you don't see the failures and the challenges that small businesses or even medium-sized businesses or even large businesses face. You, you don't see those everyday challenges, those days when, you know, you're too tired to just keep going or you can't make one more decision that day, you know. Uh, you really have to build those resiliency skills, I think. And it's not necessarily something that we're all uh, born with. Right. Oh, and then yeah. number three is surround yourself with supports, whether it be uh, people with more knowledge than you or communities where you can connect and feel a part of something or just someone you can pick up the phone and, and talk to on those days when you you just need that mm -hmm. ear or that kind Second word opinion. or you know whatever mm -hmm. that might be so I think our uh, our advice is very very similar it is yep mm. and I yeah I love what you said that that's spot on and uh resiliency is definitely it's not we're not all born with it and um I think the what do you think of the it's almost challenging becoming resilient but not becoming too hard not becoming too tough on the surface and because that's the thing about resiliency is you know you can become really 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 like a really tough person mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah but, you um, let yeah. those uh challenges and failures get to you and I think, you know, part of the beauty of women entrepreneurs is that softness, that, that level of emotion, that connection Empathy. with the customer, you know, because I think that mm -hmm. women really care about the experience that their customer has. And, and yeah. they feel things uh, very deeply when there is a customer that's not satisfied or, or you feel mm -hmm. like you haven't done met their expectations. So mm -hmm. it can be 
I think, um, challenging to keep that softness when, when you're faced with these um, disappointments or, yeah, you know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I can remember really early on in my business, I had a customer that was rightfully upset with me and, um, and it was just really hard. Like it was just like one of those, you know, one of those first times you've ever had a bad interaction with the customer and uh, really what, what happened was she wanted the product to be something that it wasn't. Mm. And I wanted to be everything for everyone. And um, I've sort of, I remember at that time I just said, okay, I think my learning from this is I need to develop a philosophy that um, it's not always meant to be. So mm -hmm. sometimes you're just going to have people and they, they're, the, your product or your company or your service, whatever it is, it doesn't align with them and it's okay. It's just not meant to be. You're not meant to have a business customer relationship with that mm. individual or that other business, whatever it is. And it kind of, you know, cause there are times where, you know, you do have to own up to mistakes or things that have happened, but there are other times where um, you can't be something that you're not. And it's not fair to yourself to try and, you know, put that on you to uh because that's what happens is as women and and just as people who have empathy we take it very personally we take it um to it to our core it's like oh no like <laughs> you know it's like this is this is uh it hurts and uh and so yeah i think i think recognizing that you can't be everything and that's that's actually a, quite a good thing. So true. I love that. It's brilliant. And, you know, on that note, I think that we really need to recognize all the women out there in business doing all the amazing things and, you know, think about maybe some of the things that we talked about and, you know, mm -hmm. Think about yeah. how you can support them and and show them yeah. they're doing a great job for International Women's Day tomorrow. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we have the capacity, we have the skills, and we just need to believe in ourselves and believe in other women. And um, that's enough. Like, that is enough. Uh, all it takes is you believing in another woman and... Um, that can be enough for her to get out there and start a business or do whatever it is that 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 person's passionate about. So, and those kind words can help her get through a rough day. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we are going to be putting this video up on our YouTube channel. So you guys can um, go and rewatch. If you missed the beginning, you can go back and, and find out how it all started tonight. Um, but I'm going to encourage everyone to check. We're going to have a post tomorrow for International Women's Day, and I want everyone to go over there and post uh, and tag their favorite women businesses so that we can all support that. them and follow them and have kind words for them, and learn about what they're doing in the business world. Love it. Great. And then don't forget, next Monday at 7 o'clock, I'll be back in the kitchen with my apron on, doing some cooking for you guys. Thank so you, good. Candace, so much for joining me tonight in the Zen Gary Kitchen live to talk about women in business thank you so much for having me it's been an absolute pleasure let's chat soon sounds great thanks everyone for joining us i hope you enjoyed it if you have questions for us you can always leave them in the chat you can uh go over to youtube and comment over there and we will try to answer all of your questions have a great night everyone bye
拜。